everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a hot minute since I've been on YouTube. Um, a lot's been going on in the world, and a lot's been going on in my personal life as well. Um, I actually threw my back out a week ago, and I've been on bed rest for the whole week. It's my first time ever throwing out my back. It is not fun, getting old is not cute, but that is just why I've been kind of inactive on a lot of my social medias. And a lot of, um, also as well, um, with what's going on in the world right now, I find it kind of, I mean, it's not, I don't really want to be posting makeup videos or makeup photos or anything in light of what's going on in the world right now. I want my social media to be a little bit more serious in what I believe in and what I'm aligned with. So this video may be a little bit of an awkward video for some of you guys, and I may end up losing a few followers after this, but I honestly don't care. Um, obviously, the world is going through big changes right now. Black Lives Matter is a movement, and I just want to give my point out there that I am always and I will always for be, and I will always be Black Lives Matter. Um, I've supported Black Lives Matter movement since, honestly, I remember being alive and having my first opinion. Um, obviously, I'm not black, but growing up in the lifestyle that I grew up in, I was around a lot of black people, and a lot of black, a lot of my black friends and families took me in because my family disowned me for being gay, and that was my first experience of being oppressed or being rejected by the, not even society, but by your own family. So. Being how I was brought up and how I was raised, I don't, I don't judge anyone by, by their, who they are or where they came from. I judge them by the person that they, like their actions, you know what I mean? What's going on in the world right now, I really want to put my stance out there to show that I am for, I mean obviously all lives matter, but right now black lives matter, if that makes sense. Like, I feel with what we've been taught throughout history, it's repeating itself, you know? Like, what's going on in the world right now, we've already experienced it a long time ago. And it may not be to the same degree that it is right now, but it's eerily and scarily similar to what's going on right now and what happened back then. And all I can think about is, growing up, we were taught to, or we were always told to protect the kids, always teach the kids, the kids are our future. And I never really understood that until now, because we are the kids now, the, the kids of the future, this is us, we are those kids, and how we are reacting to the situation right now is, is a sense how we were raised and how it shows how we've changed and how we are growing as a society. But we need to push it further, if that makes sense. Like, we can't just keep, because I honestly believe in like movements, if that makes sense, and Unfortunately, our society is, is like, brought up on movement. Like, we just feed, we jump on the next movement after movement after movement after movement. Like, first it was the gay movement, then it was the uh, uh, women's movement, and then it was the transgender movement, and then now it's the black movement. It's, and then if you notice though, those, it repeats itself. It's always repeating itself in the same type of, I don't know, like, formula or situation. So, to me, now that I think of that, like, now that I have that understanding in mind where history honestly keeps repeating itself, you have to start educating yourself and you start to have to start educating the youth as well. So case may be like, obviously I'm not going to say like this is going to be the end of it. Like this is probably going to restart again. Like 10 years from now, 20 years from now, there's probably going to be another Black Lives Matter movement. And unfortunately to say like that's what I truly feel because it just, ha it just keeps resurging. But like... It depends on how we grow from it and how we learn because if we just keep turning the blind eye and just keep uh, ignoring the situation and then it comes up again and then we just keep doing that same pattern, we're not growing as a society. But if we notice how things are changing in the world right now, how so many people are coming together, how a lot of a lot of the black community is tired. Like everyone is just tired. Like we're it's getting to the point where it's like it's almost like a joke at this point. It's just ridiculous. But on that note, I want to talk about something serious, and I want to bring it to television shows, and I want to bring it to the TV shows or the production shows that I watch, because all my life I've grown up watching TV, and I'm sure you guys know that, I've talked about that in a, many, a, few of my, a lot of my videos, I was raised off of television. My mom didn't raise me, my sisters didn't raise me, 
TV raised me. And a lot of the times, you guys are going to laugh, but, like, a lot of reality shows raised me. Because reality shows, yes, are fake, but it did have a sense of reality to it. There's situations that could be produced to become a little bit more dramatic, but the feelings, the actions, what's going on is in a sense real, you know? And for me, I can I understood that when watching these shows. So I read between the lines when watching these shows and I under I understood that. And I appreciated that. But at the same point, I noticed with MTV, especially for example, MTV Real World. Real World was about seven strangers living together and getting real. And a lot of the times there's a closet gay guy, there's a racist, there's a, like, uh, there's just a bigot, there's just, there's always a little bit of something, you know what I mean? A little bit of something where in your own life, you, in your personal circle of friendships, you can sort of see someone like that, you know what I mean? So in a way of casting for the real world, MTV did a great job selecting real type of people. And as the series went on, the show was just so good because it showed the realness of life and the realness of people living together, not knowing each other, and just growing. And it started to get to a point when you started to notice when production started to really start to play a part into it, and they started to force situations to happen. Um, it it was along that time and during Teen Mom and during all those shows coming out that I just stopped. I was like, this is getting a little too much. I don't know what the network is trying to to teach us. I don't know what the network's trying to portray, especially with Teen Mom being out there. At that time, it just made a lot of girls want to get pregnant to be on TV. So I didn't understand where the morals of where their network was trying to teach the viewers and what, what they were trying to teach the viewers. And as the years went on, I stopped watching the show. I, I, stopped, I stopped watching MTV to begin with. Actually, when The Hills ended, that's when I was like, peace. But... I started watching other network shows, um, Bravo, E, and I would still, I would notice the same type of patterns within these type of shows, and honestly, like, I don't mind a little bit of produced television, but when it starts to get to the point when it's blatant racism, or it is, it is sexism, or misogyny, it's, or it's just, it's just wrong. They are glamorizing it. And one example, when I remember watching The Real World Portland, and there was a guy on there named Jordan, and there was a girl named Nia. And I don't know if you guys watched The Challenge, but I grew up, I loved that show as well. And during that time at The Hill stopped, watch, stopped, I stopped watching everything on MTV. <coughs> but The Real World Portland had Jordan, who is this arrogant, egotistic, racist white guy and the entire season he is bullying and he picks on this girl Nia who's black on the show to the point where he starts calling her the n-word he starts going like acting like a monkey making monkey noises towards her and at one point he spits on her like he's physically he spits at her and I can understand like great television because yeah great television but if you strip it back and you really look into what production is doing and not and going forward with everything not only did they not intervene so they let this white male be extremely racist to this black female castmate but then they ended up giving him a spot on the show the challenge where he continues to be belligerently rude to women he is sexist he's somewhat times homophobic um and he's just blatantly rude and they reward him with prizes, they reward him with money, he even wins the show. And to me, I'm thinking, where are your morals, MTV? Like, why are you protecting someone who has sh has clear sh clearly shown their true intentions of who they are in on the inside, and you guys are choosing to protect him because he's white, and because he brings the network money? I don't know. So then going forward on to, like, if we're diving into the challenge, because this show is just a mess, honestly. Like, I know now making this video, I'll probably never be invited to an MTV show or any show to begin with because I have a lot of opinions, and I feel like a lot of the networks need to be reset systematically anyways, so I really don't care if I burn bridges with what I'm saying right now. But with the show The Challenge, I loved that show. I grew up religiously watching Real World Road Rules Challenge. Like, that was my shit, okay? And now... 
it's gone to the point where like I, I, I researched back into it because if it was maybe four or five years ago I just stumbled on the MTV website and I saw that the challenge was still going on and I was like what? So I obviously had to jump into it. So I started watching it from season 33, going backwards, and even going from there, I still continue to see so much racism and so much sexism and so much homophobia in this show. And I'm just thinking to myself, now that I'm an adult rewatching this, I'm like, how did, how did the network allow this? And how, how did these people not get repercussions then, you know? And I, I, I say that because I want you to think about that for a minute. Because right now, with what's going on in the world right now, Black Lives Matter movement, everything, the show actually itself has been going through a lot of controversy. I don't know if you know, but Dee Nguyen, who was the winner of the challenge last season, she had a little bit of insensitive things that she wrote on Twitter and on Instagram. And some of the comments that she says, I do not agree with. There are nothing that she said that I agree with. However the course of action that MTV chose to take right after her controversial tweets and stuff were out is what bothers me. So she said, I'm not even going to say what she said. You guys can do your Google, do your research, see what she said to her yourself. Um, but she said a lot of just a lot of weird, <laughs> really, really weird things. I'm like, what are you thinking, girl? And as she was getting into a fight, actually, no, I will break this down. So she got into a fight with one of her castmates on the show, Bailey. And Bailey on the show wrote back to her and they started beefing on Twitter and they started beefing about Black Lives Matter movement and all these things. And then, long story short, Bailey's boyfriend, Swaggy, jumps in. And Swaggy jumps in and he's all, um, defending. He's defending his girlfriend, which makes sense. Like, obviously do that. But he jumps in and he starts, like, yelling at Dee, calling her all these different types of things. And then he says the one thing that I think he fucked up with. Like, I can understand when you have passion. I understand this in that case may be. But you need to be careful with what you say. So, as they were beefing on Twitter, Dee, Bailey, and Swaggy, Swaggy revealed a secret that Dee does cocaine. And, like, on and sidebar, as if, like, any of them don't do that. But the, that she does cocaine... And that she will call them every night, call Swaggy, call the castmates, crying, apologizing, being like, oh, like, I'm tired of this character that I'm playing, all my fans hate me, blah, 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 blah. And then she will be, like, plotting new, um, new drama storylines for the show for the next season. And then he goes on on, on a more of a rant, being like, girl, you need to fix yourself, you need to, like, this, that case may be. But if you really think about it, oh, and then after that, sorry, sidebar. After that, Dee gets fired. Like, literally the next day, MTV's like, we're not standing with Dee, we're firing her, she's off the show, like, we don't, we don't agree with anything she's saying, point blank, period, boom. So they canned her so fast. And that's, the, so the whole swaggy thing, just put that on sidebar for a sec. We're gonna jump into the second sidebar. The second sidebar was, they canned her so fast for the racist tweets that she said. However, previous castmates, white, white, castmates who've said the n-word who've who've johnny bananas and his cousin vince to cheyenne kept calling her chantelle cheyenne a beautiful name and chantelle a fucking stripper name a, like a racist typical stereotypical black name you're giving it to her and you're belligerently doing that and then johnny bananas even was on the interview being like we know this is gonna bother her we know this is gonna get under her skin so we're gonna do it what so where's the re where's his repercussion where's his firing because not only did he continue to go on the show for six more or for to win the show six more times but he gets awarded all this prize money and he stole a million dollars away from sarah so mtv where are your priorities when you are trying to be a good person because right now what you're doing is honestly what we're fighting against what we're trying to be better about you firing D, which is a minority, which is a, a, girl, a, mi a minority girl, a mi an Asian to begin with, and a minority, you, instead of teaching her and using your platform and your network to do what you've done to these white guys, instead of teaching her and, sh and, and educating her, you guys just throw her out, like, as if, like, it's just, like, 
nothing. Like, all that money she's made for you guys, all of the likability, all of the, f all of the, all of that, all of that, you guys just throw away. And to me, I'm like, that is the easiest scapegoat route to take when you're trying to stand with Black Lives Matter movement, but you don't actually care about Black Lives Matter movement. Right now, MTV is just jumping on the bandwagon, trying to make it seem like they care, but they really don't care. And there's so much, so many black celebrities speaking out and up from MTV shows, telling them, telling their side of the story of what happened, Janelle being one of them on X's on the Beach. There are so many situations like this, so to me, I just want you to know, MTV, I see through your shit, <laughs> and I don't agree with it, I don't think it's okay, I think you need to have a systematic reset, because if you're going to punish one person for one thing, you should punish your whole staff and everyone on that team, everyone on the show, because everyone who's made, made racist remarks needs to be talked about, you know, and they need to be fired, because the last time I remember this happened was Camilla. Again, a minority and a woman. And y'all fired her right quick. Right quick. How does that make any sense? There was, there was another, there's so many situations on MTV where this is happening. So to me, where I stand with this situation, honestly, I stand with D. And some of y'all may laugh, some of y'all may, this the case may be. But I stand with Dee and I will stand with Dee because she is not getting treated fairly in this moment right now. Because yes, she said the wrong thing, yes, she's an adult, yes, she should know better. However, think about the character that she's playing. Think about what she, Swaggy said on Twitter when Swaggy was like, oh, she calls us every night and she's like, oh, I don't like playing this character, um, what other things should we do? Let's really break that down for a second, because if you're really reading between the lines of that, that means, even regardless of the cocaine, that means D calls Swaggy and has has planned for drama within the show, you know what I mean? And if we keep that in mind, I can only assume that other castmates do that. And we know castmates do that, because we've heard from previous seasons when Wes would be like, oh, I contacted this, this, that person before the show. Oh, I made deals with this, this, that person before the show. So how do we not know that your, your castmates aren't producing the drama themselves? And this is just a conspiracy theory right now. But if you notice the past, like, three, two seasons have been, like, War of the World, and yes, that's, like, cute, and, like, whatever the case may be. But... To me, I find that to be cheap because we, I, at least for me, I watch the challenge because I liked watching the destinations that they go to. I love when they go to Thailand and they actually like go within the city. I liked when they go to like anywhere and they're actually a part of the city and the culture. And I know that costs money doing that and I know they have to have rights to, to do all of that. So for them to just switch everything and turn them into like a bunker house, the only other time I remember a show going to a bunker was Bad Girls Club. Now, I don't know if you guys remember Bad Girls Club, but there was a season when production produced and allowed a lot of the other girls to ruin the main girls' stuff. Like, Chanel purses, like, Hermes stuff, like, all of their goods was ruined, and produ production just let it happen. They didn't stop it, they let it happen for TV. And the girls sued the show, and they won. And so the show... Obviously, their value started to go down, and then the next season, they brought the girls to a warehouse, and it was so, like, what? I mean, no sense. Like, why are they living in a warehouse when before they lived in mansions? So with that in mind, I was wondering, I was like, why are they now all in bunkers? And also, not only are they in bunkers, look at the storylines that are happening. Like, Jenna and Zach, we know their, like, we know their storyline is for them to fight all the time. Like, we know that's a lie, you know? Um... For the dramas that they're starting now, I truly believe that production is paying them for the drama. They're like, yo guys, do you guys want to do this for the drama? Do this, we'll pay you like $30,000 if you do this, we'll pay you this, that, that case maybe if you do this. So they don't even have to win the show at this point. They just need to go and start drama. Because with what Swaggy said, if we listen to what Swaggy said, D calls, they plan, and drama happens. And if you notice the past, what, two seasons, it's been very D-focused very defocused. So that means MTV wants Dee to be this character. They want her to have this type of role and this type of situation. And 
when push comes to shove, and now she is this person, they just choose to throw her away, you know what I mean, not educate her. And my whole point of my this video, and like why I'm talking about this, is education, and being better. Because at the beginning of the video I was talking about how history repeats itself, and we don't want that to happen. at least I don't want that to happen anymore, like I'm so tired of seeing the same type of history repeat itself, I'm so tired of people not getting it, and people not seeing it, and honestly, like, I have a part to blame as well, because I watched these shows, and I gave in to these shows, and I didn't use my voice then, like I am using it now, but that's the difference, is I'm using my voice now. And you guys, MTV, you had a, cho a chance to use your voice for the better, opposed to just joining a bandwagon and throwing away your most likable or the one who's making you the most money for the show right now and not educating her properly because that doesn't teach her anything and that doesn't teach the fans anything either. It just goes to show, like, what? When you make a mistake, you're just going to get, like, you don't have any, any type of um, way to make yourself better. You know what I mean? Like... I just find the course of action that they chose to be super unprofessional, super, super hypocritical. And honestly though, at this day and age, at this time, like, are you guys surprised about MTV at all? MTV has always been like, kind of sketchy and shady. The only thing good that came out of them was The Hills and Laguna Beach, and that's my, that's my tea. But Again, that's where I stand with this. I really want to know your opinion down below. I know I went on a little bit ramble there, but I just find that it's time for us to, like, stick together. Like, Asians and Black have been fighting oppression side by side since the time of day. All minorities have been fighting oppression since the time of day. And it's time like this where we just need to stand together, we need to educate each other, and we, need not, we don't have to have this cancel culture or, like, this culture of just, like, of... of... what's it called? I'm losing my train of thought. But you know what I mean? Let me know you down below. And while you're down there, leave a like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And follow me on Twitter, because everything's popping off on Twitter right now. That's where I'm going to be posting this video. A lot of uh, people have been requesting for me to talk about this situation. And actually, on that note, I want to give a shout-out to two particular people who made a response video to what's going on. And they asked me to watch it. And I would love for you guys to watch it as well. So, follow at Annie Thompson, because she just made an amazing video talking about what's going on with Dean Nguyen right now as well. So follow her on Twitter at Annie, A-N-I-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N, and I will link her video down below in my description. Thank you again, Annie, for suggesting for me to make this video, and thank you guys for sitting by and watching this video. Like I said, if you guys have any opinions, even if it's not with me. I would love to hear it because I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not right at all. Every day in my life I am learning more and more things about the world and about what I've learned or the, you know what I mean? I'm being tested every day and I love it. So if you guys have anything that you guys want to say let me know down below. DM me on Twitter. Follow me on all my social media handles. It'll all be down below. And until next time, stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Love people, love your neighbor, be nice, don't be a bitch. Seriously, Karen, get the fuck off my page. Thank you.